For those of you that don't know, I'm Maggie, and today we are chatting through all of my favorite Amazon home finds recently. Now, we've gotten a ton of stuff from Amazon, but these are just the ones that have really, really stood out to me. And we're also gonna be going on kind of a little bit of a house tour. Instead of me just sitting in place talking about these items, I wanted you to see them in action. Also, in other exciting news, this is my first video that I've filmed since I got married. So it feels really good to be back and back into the swing of things. So I wanted to start with the bedroom. This is where I typically film. Disclaimer, not a single room in our house is finished. So for instance, that whole area of just junk, that'll all be going away soon because we just ordered this big, really pretty brass arched mirror that's gonna kinda live above on that wall. So what I wanna start with today is actually this blue blanket. So let me bring you a little bit closer. Starting near the ground here, we're gonna start with this really pretty, kinda slate blue throw blanket. And Nash is also gonna help us with this little tour today, it turns out. So this is in an oversized dimension. It's 60 by 80, which I thought was pretty huge because we wanted it to be able to fit across the bottom of our king bed. Now the inspiration for this throw blanket, which was oddly hard to find in this kind of color, was this picture that I had been copying from McGee and Company. I had seen a bedroom of theirs that I really loved it. I thought it was kind of unique and it worked in neutral colors and blues, which I thought would be really good and gender neutral for our bedroom. So this throw was, I think, $42.99 in that oversized version on Amazon, and it is great quality. It's super thick, it's super soft, and it's been through the washing machine. Nash actually got sick on it not too long ago, and the stains came out perfectly fine. I will say, though, it comes with a little bag that you're supposed to wash it in that I completely forgot about. So the fringe on mine got a little bit tangled, and I should do some work on that, but ultimately, it sits kind of bunched on the bottom of our bed, so it's not really a huge deal in the long run. This is also a great thing to use, maybe in a guest room, if you're not sure if the person coming to visit you is a cold sleeper or a hot sleeper, it's always good to just have layers on your bed, and I think that this adds a good pop of color and dimension to our bedroom. As you can see, we really went with the neutrals and kept things pretty white, so I think I'm gonna go with like a gray or a blue curtain to kind of complement this and really bring out some more blue in this room. Haven't gotten to the curtains yet though, so TBD. Maybe those will be in a future Amazon Favorites video. Another home favorite that we have been absolutely loving is one that we actually got off of our Amazon registry, and that is these king pillows right here. Now. Funny story, we actually have some super fancy Brooklyn and pillows that live below it. And as you can see here, it's not super plush. Like this is a really thick pillow and it made it kind of hard on our necks. Like we're side sleepers and stomach sleepers and I kind of felt like I was sleeping like this the whole night. So we knew we needed something a little bit more plush. In case you were looking into Brooklyn and we got the mid plush. And if you are a side sleeper or stomach sleeper like me, then I would really, really recommend the regular plush pillows. And they're pretty expensive, but in the set that we ended up buying, we kind of got them at a discount. And I knew there had to be a cheaper alternative on the market. So of course I turned to Amazon. And then enters these pillows. Now as you can see, when I hold this one up, it completely folds like a tent, so you know that it's actually a lot more plush than those Brooklyn and pillows are. And we did end up getting ours in the king size so that they would fit really nice and oversized across the bed. I didn't want too many pillows on the bed or I knew that we wouldn't be making our beds every morning, but I really can't recommend these enough. They still had this plush pillow in a standard or a queen size pillow. But if you're just looking for something that's really, really great for you to sleep on and it's not gonna like keep your neck all crooked it and everything, these pillows are great. They are Brian and Maggie approved. That's everything for the bed that I found off Amazon lately, so now let's move over to the closet. As you can see, our closet is super skinny. It's actually just one long hallway with one rack for each person to hang their clothes on. So it really isn't the most well thought out closet on the face of the planet. Our long-term goal is to make it a little bit more organized. You know, make one of those custom closets from Ikea or the container store. But since we just moved into our first home, there are approximately 1 million other things that we need to buy before that. So that has really been put on the back burner. And because it's not the most functional 
closet, we really had to think creatively about the type of laundry hamper that we wanted. I knew that I wasn't one of those people that wanted a laundry hamper out in the open in the bedroom. So I found these slim line laundry hampers and I wish that I could take total credit for it, but I actually found them from another blogger, Jean Wong, who I started following initially for her petite clothing, but she also happens to live in a pretty small apartment in Boston. So they're also looking for creative storage solutions, which is something that we need so much of it in this house. Like we do not have a ton of storage. So she found these awesome hampers. Let me show you what they look like. Okay, we're going rogue for a little bit. I'm off of the tripod so that I can show you the limited space that we actually have in this closet for the laundry hampers and why these slim lined ones were the definite solution to our issue. Come take a look. So this is my view when I'm just looking into the closet. You can see our clothes take up most of the space. And I just had this one little area here that could fit a laundry hamper. Now a laundry hamper of typical size would have taken up that entire space, but because I wanted our clothes separated already, because I hate the process of digging through dirty clothes before I go to do laundry, I knew that I wanted to be able to fit one for light clothes and one for dark clothes because that's as far as we go from a separation standpoint. And if I wheel these two little hampers in, you can see how nicely they tuck into this limited space. Now the one thing I do like is that I do have some clothes that are hanging pretty close to the openings of these laundry hampers, but there's still plenty of space for us to throw our clothes in and then keep rocking and rolling. I just think that the features on this laundry hamper are really well thought out. First of all, you'll notice that when it comes in the mail, you're gonna think it has no structure and that it's not actually gonna stand up and it'll be kind of clumsy to throw your clothes in all the time, but that's definitely not the case. Each laundry hamper comes with four kind of support sticks that kind of work like a tent that you would set up in your backyard. So you put those in the four corners and then they Velcro shut so that you can see that it stands up nicely all the time. It also comes with four wheels on the bottom of each hamper pre-installed for you. But another feature that I like a lot about these is the clear window in the front so that you can clearly see that it's filled all the way up and that you're ready to wash clothes. Now, you could also kind of like peer over the top and see that too. It also has this little pleather tab that makes it easy to wheel to and from our bedroom and the laundry room and back. All in all, this is exactly what I was looking for. I will say, because they're not the biggest laundry hampers in the world, they do fill up pretty quickly, but with two people in a house, we typically tend to do laundry once a week. So to me, the fact that it fills up isn't a huge downside. Now, if you had a bigger family of maybe like three or four people and you're all trying to use the same laundry hampers, you may need multiple. Now, I just went with one beige and one black because we do one load of darks and one load of lights or towels sometimes if we're feeling real crazy and separating everything. On the whole, these were a super affordable, kind of $22 to $24. For whatever reason, the colors were priced differently. Highly, highly recommend them. We are now in my favorite room of the house, which happens to be our living room. And this also is one of the most exciting things that I have to show you today because it was something that I was very hesitant to buy from Amazon and that is curtains. It totally depends on your taste and your style and what your space needs. So we have a ton of natural light in this house that was a little bit unexpected because when we moved in, they had these really dark black window screens over the windows to where you couldn't even see the window panes. It was very, very strange. We ended up taking those off of every window in the entire house with the exception of these ones in the back just to keep things a little bit cooler in the living room and because not a lot of people see those windows because they're in the back of our house. So for this space, I wanted to keep things super light and airy. So I knew that I didn't want complete blackout curtains. So I ended up going with an off-white light filtering linen curtain from Amazon. As you can see, when I pull this over the window, you can still pretty much see through the window, but it's not completely sheer. I didn't want that like really flowy look. I wanted something that was just a little bit heavier than that. Something with a little bit more texture, something with a little bit more weight, but something that again was not blackout because I didn't want to lose the natural light that we finally got into our house. Another great thing about these curtains is that they came in a set of two, which means that it came with two panels. You have one panel on this side of the window and one panel on this side of the window. Now a lot of really fancy curtains, specifically those from Pottery Barn or something, cost like 60 to $100 per her panel. Now, to be fair, the ones that I was looking at were completely lined. They were probably going to look a little bit more high end, but on the whole, I don't think that you need to spend a ton on your curtains. And I feel like if we did want these lined one day to look a little bit heavier and maybe block out a little bit more light, 
I don't think that it would be extremely hard to sew on just kind of a white cotton piece in the back. So we ended up getting this set of two panels for somewhere around the $35 to $40 mark for both, which is crazy, crazy good because curtains can be outrageously expensive. So you won't run into that issue here with these Amazon curtains, which have been great. But our Amazon purchases for these windows did not stop with the actual curtains themselves. We also got our curtain rod and the little rings that we used to kind of slide them shut and open from Amazon as well. Now I knew that I wanted to go for that look with the actual curtain rings. I didn't want the traditional look of a pocket curtain, even though these actually are pocket curtains. So if you wanted to thread them onto your actual curtain rod, that is an option for you. I was really going for a little bit more of a modern, like casual look. And so we did want to go with the sliding rings. They're also so much easier to actually close your blinds with, just an FYI, if you wanted something extra functional. So I ended up getting my rings in a pack of 40 on Amazon for something really inexpensive, like $12.99, I wanna say. We love, love, love the curtain rods that we ended up getting. The exact dupes that they have at Crate & Barrel and even I wanna say on Target, were more expensive than the ones that we ended up getting on Amazon. And we were just going for, again, a simple, modern look, and these completely fit the bill. Now, another cool thing about these is that I ended up ordering too many the first time because these curtain rods actually come in a pack of two. So Amazon made it super easy and affordable to get that like sleek, kind of modern look that seems to be all over magazines and the internet and Instagram accounts and everything these days. So we were really, really excited with the way that these turned out. So I wanted to throw in some window hanging tips that we picked up along the way because we didn't want our inexpensive window features to look inexpensive. We wanted to be sure that they were hung properly to where they really elevated the space and gave it kind of that high end look for a really low price tag. So something that we learned was that our ceilings are actually a very strange height. We went with a 96 inch curtain panel because we knew we wanted it to kind of kiss the ground and 96 ended up being a little too long and we haven't exactly gotten around to hemming them yet, but I don't hate the way that they kind of like gather on the floor. I think that it kind of looks a little bit more effortless, but I think in the end we will still end up hemming them. But know that the goal with your curtains is that they kiss the floor. They can billow a little bit, but the last thing that you want is for your curtains to be too short for your space because it's going to end up making your ceilings and everything look a lot shorter than they actually are. So you really want to give the illusion that your house is taller to make the space look grander and bigger. So definitely make sure that you measure from basically basically the top of your ceiling all the way to the floor to kind of get that max height that your curtains can be. Because again, you can always take off length, but you can't add it on. Now, another thing is how high do you actually hang the curtain rod? And the recommendations that we found were don't hang a curtain rod any lower than two to four inches below where your wall meets your ceiling. Because our ceilings are pretty tall, we kind of went four-ish inches down from the top and it still looked very high and it still elevated our space, which worked really nicely. And then another factor to consider is how wide do you want that curtain rod to extend? So always make sure that the range of the curtain rod that you're buying is going to exceed the width of your window. Now they recommend six inches of extension on either side because I really wanted to make sure that our curtains overlapped both the wall and the window a little bit since I knew that they were going to remain open most of the time. That was a lot of window talk, let's move on to the coffee table. So in the spirit of total transparency, when this coffee table came in, we were not completely sold on it. It was extremely light for one, and I was a little bit disappointed because it looked like an extremely heavy, sturdy coffee table. And I do think that it still gives off that real marble vibe. However, like I can just pick up this whole thing with just one hand and it's nothing. Now this did cost $132. Now depending on what you consider expensive, I don't know where that falls, but this was actually a pretty good deal for a coffee table as far as this look is concerned. This is a really kind of in style right now. And when I looked at places like Pottery Barn and Crate and Barrel and Restoration Hardware, these types of coffee tables, while probably real marble, they go in like the 300, 400, $100, $500 range and we just didn't really want to spend that much on a coffee table so we're still getting this same look and it actually has really grown on us 
or grown on me. I really haven't asked Brian's thoughts on it. But the thing that I really like about it is that it is extremely light. So if you have a lot of people over and you feel like you need to move the coffee table for whatever reason, that's a really easy thing to do. It was really easy to put together, which was another super pro. And another thing I like about it is because it's not super expensive and because it's not real marble and it's not porous, you can put your feet on it without feeling bad about it. You can put wet drinks down on it without feeling bad about it. And I just like that it's a super functional coffee table in that way without me being super concerned about, you know, taking really, really good care of it. Now, because we have this really big sectional that's just one big right angle, I knew that I wanted a round coffee table to kind of complement that space and kind of break up the shapes that were already happening. So I was really looking for a round table almost exclusively, and we have really liked that style. We went back and forth on whether or not we should get a storage coffee table, and in the end, I'm glad that we kind of went with just this open design because the sides of our couch are very filled in and thick, and we just needed something that was a little bit more open air and breathable or a little bit more leggy as some people like to call it and I also think that the matte black legs here complement the curtain rods that we chose really well so it just kind of ties everything together so in the end I do really love this coffee table which is why I'm recommending it to you so now we've talked through everything in the bedroom that we've been living everything in the living room and now it's time to share with you just some odds and ends that I would be just completely skimping out on if I didn't mention because these are things that we use almost every single day. They just don't fit nicely into any particular category. And one of those random items happens to be this outdoor chair. And it looks just like your typical outdoor sporting event chair, but it's so much more than that. So these chairs actually work on hydraulics to simulate the feeling of a rocking chair, which we just thought was mind-blowingly cool. And when we were looking for a couple of different things to add to our Amazon registry, this just seemed like a logical choice because we spend a lot of time outside. And I just feel like that's something that you need as a person with a house or just being an adult. It's something that's really useful. You can take it with you to different sporting events, but we didn't want just any outdoor chairs. In fact, when my dad saw these for the first time, he immediately got on Amazon and ordered them for their house. It's just something that's a little bit different and they're definitely more comfortable. I feel like in a lot of outdoor chairs you sit down and you just kind of like sink into them like the backs are too tall and the seat is too low and you definitely don't have that issue with these chairs. It has an extremely like taut seat that you sit on so you don't sink down super low and you feel very supported. It also has a nice little cup holder on the bottom here so that you can bring your drink with you outdoors and on the whole I just really cannot recommend these chairs enough. Last but not least is an item that I've definitely already mentioned before, but this is something that we legitimately use every day. Now I'm in the kitchen to show you this because you can see that we have these really light wood floors. And because of that, things show up on it so easily. So Nash always wanders in and brings sticks and grass and rocks and all sorts of other things. So it kind of goes without saying that we reach for a vacuum a lot and we have really loved our Dyson. Now this is a humongous investment. This ended up costing us $400. I'd still totally recommend buying. I would buy this again and again and again. Now, first of all, the thing that I love so much about it is how lightweight it is. This is not your typical vacuum that you feel like you have to lug everywhere. Another huge important feature that I didn't realize that I valued so much is that it's cordless. So you don't have to be next to outlets, which is really nice because this house really doesn't have a whole lot of outlets that are conveniently placed. And then another cool thing is that the actual attachments to it come on and off so easily. You simply press this little red button and pull down and then it separates the actual vacuum handle from the different attachments. Now we definitely use this traditional hookup the most, but it doesn't really matter because when you buy the Dyson vacuum, it comes with every single hookup regardless. It's not like I need to recommend to you which attachments are the best because you're gonna get them all if you purchase this. Now we also went with the V8 and not the V10. One, it was $100 cheaper. Two, it's pretty much the exact same thing except for this model is a little bit heavier than the newer one. And somebody did comment the last time that I mentioned this and they said that the V10 actually works a lot better to adjust when it's going over carpet and hardwood floors. Since we have hardwood floors throughout our entire home with the exceptions of a couple rugs here and there, we didn't really need this feature so much. And so the V8 works perfectly fine for us. And this is something that seriously, every time we pull it out, we're like, what would we do without this thing? We use it every day. Now, when you have it on this max suction setting, the battery goes down super fast. 
So I would definitely recommend keeping it on the high suction extended run setting. I'm able to easily vacuum the entire house without having to charge it, but once I'm finished, it definitely goes immediately back on the charger. So it doesn't have the longest battery life. I think if I remember correctly from online, it's like a 40 minute run if you use this extended run setting. But on the whole, this is easily the best home purchased we've ever made. And that's everything. That's all of my favorite home items that we've been loving so far. I'm sure that I'll make a part two to this video because the more that we're outfitting this house, the more we're finding really great, useful things that we would love to share with you. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you like this video, then like it, stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.